Andrew Huberman is predicting that magnesium will be the next breakthrough supplement. This is a recent post on Instagram. I'll share it with you right here on the screen. He writes, vitamin D3 supplementation, largely accepted nowadays. Creatine, starting to break through. Next, magnesium, threonate or bisglycinate chelate. Why? Well, for starters, magnesium can protect against hearing loss. There is solid data on reducing migraines, and it can improve sleep 30 to 60 minutes before bed. He goes on to say, I have an episode of the podcast with MD, PhD, and chair of a major medical school department who explains why magnesium is beneficial for many people. The old guard that dismisses supplements is dissolving away. And of course, RX meds still matter, but the landscape is not the same anymore. And last but not least, he says, and as always, and I've stated this in pretty much every podcast and every venue I possibly can, you have to get your behaviors right. Supplements are not a replacement. It's obvious, but people overlook it nonetheless. Okay, so let's dive into this. And many of you know, I'm a huge fan of magnesium and we've put out multiple videos recently about magnesium, particularly magnesium L3 and 8. We launched that in January of this year, 2025. We've recently talked about an even better form of magnesium, in my opinion, <clears throat> than magnesium uh, l 3 8 known as magtine, although that is an awesome magnesium and I've been using that for a lot of years. The magnesium acetyl taurinate, which is basically magnesium bound to acetyl taurine, and that has been shown to cross the blood-brain barrier as effectively, if not even more so, than, than magnesium l 3 uh, That raw material is actually made in Belgium. It's an awesome magnesium, and we'll talk a little bit more about why I think that's amazing. But I totally agree with Dr. Andrew Huberman. I mean, the three supplements that most, I, I think four supplements that most people should be taking would be, in this order, vitamin D, magnesium, zinc creatine. Now, again, it really depends upon your diet. And why do I put creatine at the very end? Well, if you eat red meat, you probably don't need to supplement with creatine, but you can benefit from creatine supplementation uh, around exercise. But we know that vitamin D3, particularly in the winter months, and even if you live in Colorado or Arizona, I've participated in actual, you know, open label uh, studies with the Aurora Fire Department where we measured, uh, and this was in the early 2000s when I was working with a mentor of mine, Dr. Gerard Guillory, a family medical doctor in Colorado. We found that even in firemen who are really active and oftentimes because their work schedule is such where they work, it's called 48-4. 48 hours on, four days off, 48 hours on, four days off. And during their four days off, these individuals often you know, do side jobs, whether it's construction or landscaping, or they go out and play and go hiking and biking and all this. Even in the sunny state of Colorado, where there's well over 300 sunny days per year, it was about a 60%, uh, again, during our small open label study, about 60% of these participants, there's about 90 people in this open label study, they were deficient in vitamin D. And this was even back then because people are scared about, you know, exposing their body to sun, wearing sunscreen, covering up and so forth. So even in sunny states like Colorado, there's actually research done at University of Arizona in Tucson, where a lot of college students were suboptimal in vitamin D. So that's really important because we know that vitamin D plays a really important role in terms of brain health and cardiovascular health and blood pressure and so forth. But you know, magnesium is really important because magnesium is involved in, in, I think it was like 10 to 12 different enzymatic reactions in vitamin D binding protein and vitamin D metabolism, uh, as well as over 300 enzymatic reactions in the body. If we think about uh, magnesium sort of like salt and, and cooking, like with any meal, whether you're making pancakes or french fries or pasta uh, lasagna i mean i can't think of a single food where the flavor and the cooking process or the recipe does not require salt like salt is really important in cooking and it seems that magnesium is really important when it comes to intermediary metabolism meaning making cellular energy regulating blood pressure and venous tone, uh, affecting uh, cognition and neurotransmitter synthesis and balancing out NMDA metabolism in the brain and calcium and glutamate metabolism in the brain. Magnesium is intimately involved in those processes. But the favorite w way that I think about magnesium is without magnesium, you are not making cellular energy. Now, as we've discussed before, our own NHANES data, this is an epidemiological data set here, uh, tens of thousands of people have been tracked over the course of now 30 plus years. And uh, data shows that more than 50% of you watching and listening right now are deficient functionally in magnesium. Now, that's a problem because your kidneys release 
about 100 milligrams per day. So if you're deficient and the cut points for most people, for men, you need at least 400 milligrams per day. For women, and this doesn't even include pregnancy or lactation, the bare minimum for most women is over 300 milligrams per day. And most people are not even getting close to that. So magnesium, is super affordable. We have a lot of high quality options out there. And I want to share with you the four forms. It's really five that we'll talk about today and why that's really important. But again, I agree with Dr. Andrew Huberman here that magnesium is going to be talked about uh, much more in the future because the data is really compelling and clear. Okay. So the two forms for just whole body metabolism when it comes to magnesium is diamagnesium malate and magnesium bisglycinate chelate. I know these are big multisyllabic words. We can just simplify this, magnesium malate, magnesium glycinate, okay? Uh, We know that magnesium malate tends to be concentrated more in the skeletal muscle. So if you exercise, if you go in the sauna, if you move your body, you should be getting magnesium malate. Um, I found that some people have gastrointestinal distress with magnesium malate, so I tend to lean more towards magnesium glycinate or magnesium bisglycinate from Albion. When it comes to sourcing, there's all all sorts of uh, magnesium uh, raw materials out there. Uh, the raw material provider that I'm biased and lean towards is called Albion. These are true amino acid chelates. This company is based in Salt Lake City, Utah, the Great Salt Lake, where a lot of the uh, the magnesium is actually sourced and then it's blended with either glycine or malic acid. So those are the two really affordable forms that I would recommend. There is new research about magnesium orotate that I'll get into a little bit later, but but it comes to the brain because it turns out that magnesium is really important uh, in the brain, uh, regulating, as I mentioned, glutamate and calcium homeostasis. Uh, really important there. The two forms that have been shown to cross the blood-brain barrier, uh, one of which you really what you know about, it's called magnesium l 3 8 The branded form is known as magtine. We've done videos on this. Uh, I'm a, a huge fan of this raw material as well as the new magnesium known as magnesium torate or magnesium specifically magnesium acetyl torinate from Belgium. Those two forms have been shown to cross the blood brain barrier where they have, they can increase magnesium concentrations in the brain. And that's important for neurotransmitter synthesis, brain energy and beyond. So those two forms are awesome. And I'll put links in the description below for different options for you for a whole body magnesium or more of a brain based magnesium if you're interested. And to finish up magnesium orotate is another form that is getting a lot of airtime and a lot of attention. And I think this is worthy of consideration. Um, you know, there's a lot of supplements out there that are like, hey, we, we give you like 25 different magnesiums and all this. And most of these uh, supplements actually are just loaded with magnesium citrate and magnesium oxide, which as you may know, are two of the poorest f- absorbable forms of magnesium. They also tend to be the cheapest. So if you're trying to increase your profitability of your magnesium supplementation and your marketing company, of course, you're going to load it up with magnesium oxide and magnesium citrate and put in pixie dust levels of the other more expensive forms of magnesium. Because it turns out that magnesium, like other raw materials, there's a wide range in cost. Uh, the uh, magnesium citrate, magnesium oxide, it's roughly between four and six dollars per, per kilogram. Whereas the magnesium bisglycinate chelate, the dimagnesium malate and so forth are closer to 25 or $30 per kilogram. And on the high end, the magtine, that's the magnesium l 3 as well as the ATA mag or the magnesium acetyl torate, that is closer to $200 per kilogram. So you can see here why most supplement companies are just giving you the magnesium citrate, just giving you the magnesium oxide because really high margin products, not the best forms of magnesium. Like if you are constipated, I would recommend taking magnesium citrate because it's so poorly absorbed that it actually draws water into your colon and can help you have a bowel movement. But we're not trying to defecate out magnesium. We're trying to get it into our body. And that's why I uh, am biased towards magnesium malate, magnesium glycinate, or if we're concerned about our brain, which most of you should be, the uh, magnesium l 3 and the ATA mag. And then also, you know, magnesium orotate has some pretty good research in, in terms of optimizing cardiovascular health. So those are the, the five forms that I would recommend. There's no need to get a liposomal magnesium. I've seen this at natural food stores here. 
magnesium is absorbed in the small intestine. You're not going to really absorb significant amounts uh, transdermally or via a liposome. It's not fat soluble. You know, a liposome might be good for, say, coenzyme Q10 or fatty acids or fat soluble compounds, but we don't need a, a liposomal magnesium. So I'd save your money there. You don't need to, to spend a, a lot of money on that. But I agree that magnesium is really important. I also think that zinc is really important. So that should be something that should be on our radar. We know that zinc and magnesium concentrations in the soil and therefore in our food are actually going down. So we're not getting as much of these compounds uh, in our diet. And I put, you know, creatine as like the fifth or fourth thing on the must have supplement list because creatine is obviously very important. Um, if you eat red meat, you're getting decent amounts of creatine, but you can still benefit from taking creatine around exercise or particularly on days where you're uh, jet lagged or you have social jet lag or you want to optimize cognitive performance. So interesting stuff. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. What do you think about Andrew Huberman's uh, post here? I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are and what I like about magnesium is it's water soluble. And I, I think the medical community can garner around this and you know really adopt the fact that this is uh, an important supplement just like vitamin d you know back in the early 2000s i mean everyone was talking, I, I should say in the functional medicine space a lot of doctors were talking about it there was a little resistance from the medical community and now it's widely accepted within medicine and i think in the next 20 years uh, both creatine as well as magnesium will be more widely accepted and most uh, doctors whether or not they're mainstream or more integrative or functional will be talking about these two compounds let me know what you think in the comments section below and we'll catch you on a future video down the road.